this one. And so oh. some of okay. the older oh, skeletons that we've zoomed oh, into kind of look like reach. there's like little. <laughs> Hercules oh. just had to stretch a little yeah, there. Moving grab. <laughs> Zoom so in, please. Easy. Okay, starboard beta. Is that black enough? Yeah, it's pretty black. Okay, come wide, please. Yeah, the idea is that, Sample. you know, the nutrients are so uh, rare down I'm here okay. that That's okay. leaving something you can open the box. is strange. Right. Yeah, oh, I mean, calcite just isn't um, a rare thing down here, and uh, not particularly no uh, nutritious. Oh, what's this? So, uh, especially at this depth, the, the calcite hmm. will eventually dissolve. What's what the purple? Put it, oh, what if we put it in uh, echo? Uh, that one is full, but you could try. B is too small. I'll try. You can try and put it in E. <laughs> yeah, try and put it in E. Flat. Yeah, that's great. Okay, it's in E, Echo. Great. That was sample 073. 073, Roger. Check this out. It's one of my favorite bamboo corals. This is the I4 clade. That box isn't closing very well. Nope, there's a sponge there. Gotcha. Okay, uh, are you on backwards right now? Yeah, you're going north. Where are going? You're going, going crazy. <laughs> so I'm gonna go down slope. No, you gotta go uh, yeah, in front, going. Of, front of Argus two four five. Roger. You're off the map, yo. I oh, know. <laughs> Uncharted <laughs> territory. Turn back. <laughs> turn back. It's just so much exciting stuff over there. Speaking yeah, that's of a video nice, games, nice along that edge, I think. Okay, I got 10 minutes tops. 10 minutes left on bottom. All right. Let's see what we can see. I'll take these video game oh questions God. during blue water. Oh. Mm. So we got some, uh, I see an Anthemastis. There's some. Bubblegum coral, Metallogorgia. Okay. Oh, whoops. That purple coral is, is Victogorgia okay. alba. Roger. Looks like we're heading up a little bit of a slope. Okay. Okay. There's that Candidella gigantea. Now we're back to our bamboo forest. Do you have a question for Nick Orley? Yeah. What's the origin of all these pebbles and rocks? How'd all this get down here? Of all these pillows and rocks? Pebbles and pebbles rocks. Pebbles and rocks. Yeah. Um, um, right now we're on basalt, a basalt seamount. So those are formed from volcanism. And then on top of that, you have coating of caramel's crust. And then on top of that, you have this kind of layer of okay. particulate matter, which we call marine snow, the light dusting on top of that. The origin Where does is basalt that come from? basalt comes from inside of the earth. It the comes volcano? from Earth's mantle.
Lots of yellow around here. Yep, that all that yellow are the parazoanthids that are overgrowing um, the parts where the bamboo coral tissue has receded. Oh my goodness! Looks like Check grass. This. I got a whole little garden of sea pens. These are called holipterus. They're really densely packed in here. Concern? Let's get let's get some good views of this before we leave. Yeah. It's a writer's convention. I haven't seen them like this close together. They're all just really, really close. Oopsies. It's a sea pen, sea pen garden. This Come is where the writers come to hang out. I said it's a writer's convention. Yeah. But they're all in a row. Look at that. Yeah, that there's like this little of patch sediment. Yeah. of sediment, and they're just all right there. It's a parade. Do we want to grab a sea pen before we leave? Do we? Are you asking if you want to, or are you asking if we want to? Ask it if, if you want to. Oh, I want to. Yeah. 100% right. I want to. All right, grab a sea pen. Okay, and then we'll come off bottom after that sample. What are we going to write, though? What sample jars are open? Uh, okay, so you can put it in. Where do you don't you don't want to slurp it? I want to slurp it. Yeah. Okay, four and five are open. Okay. Uh, there we go. Oh, come on, you! Oh, look at this cool little anemone. It's got little balls at the ends of its tentacles. I love this view. It's very cool. Okay, I think I'm settled there. Not crushing anything. Are you happy for me to zoom into Argus? Yep. Oh, thanks. So that an enemy that we we spotted for just a few seconds. Um, Looks like there's a fish was hanging a out next to us. Oh yeah, sneaking up on us. Yeah, that fish is trying to, try, it's going to sneak in. Sneaky fish. Hmm. Trying to get to seven? They've been really sticky. Yeah. Mm. So I, I decided falling. I wanted to collect one of these just because this is a really interesting dense aggregation of these sea pens. Um, I haven't seen anything quite like this, especially not on the very summit of a seamount. So it's a unique observation and we could learn a little bit more about what the sea pen is uh, by observing it in the lab. Okay, yeah. Um, I kind of fell off of it, but let me come in again. We're full wide again on Argus. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm going to come in right here. Yeah, okay. Go for it. Yep. Yeah, I wonder if all of these sea pens are related. Probably. They're probably all related. We do often get, uh, like we ask and also get questions about, um, you know, why things are so spread so far apart. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is a situation where the ground nearby was just fertile. Yeah, this location was just really That's prime right, location to be. The place to be. You can see that the few that have tried to get in between the rocks are having some trouble. And that sort of the one open sandy patch is just densely packed with these sea pens. 
And as we're looking at it, you can see why it's called a sea pen. That end of the uh, coral looks a little bit like a pen, and that's called its peduncle. It's what? Peduncle. Peduncle? That is the best word ever. Yeah, it's also what you call um, the base of the tail of uh, like a dolphin or a whale. It's pedunculus. <laughs> so, uh, slurping this, it's not going to get stuck in the tube, is it? Maybe the question is, will it get in the tube? He did hear you, Megan. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Sorry, I wasn't on SPL for that. Yeah, it, it'll, it's in the tube now, so at least we can uh, recover it. Untube okay. it. Yeah, come wide, please. And we'll get set up for recovery. Awesome. Thank you. The that was a fun little zero seven four. All right, zero, you know where you're going. Thank you. Um, sort of. What jar did you try to put it in? Four. I don't know why I can't get the camera lined up. There we go. On the topic of coral thriving, uh, how do corals reproduce? So corals reproduce by spawning. They will create their gametes in their tissues and then release them usually at the same time. So they'll coordinate the release of their gametes into the water column and hopefully those gametes will meet up and form a zygote and that will turn into a larval coral. And that larval coral will get pushed around by the currents in the ocean and eventually find a place to settle and grow, hopefully. But other things could happen to that larva, could get eaten, uh, could never find a place to settle. And one of the things we're really interested in studying is how larvae travel from one place to another and what type of settlement cues are there that um, let a coral know that this is a good place to live. Are we so officially like those, leaving? Yeah, I believe we are officially leaving the bottom. That is it for our dive this morning. We will take about two hours to recover to the surface and then we will grab our samples and process them and head over to our next seamount location. Should take about four hours after we get on deck. Uh, can the moon have something to do with the spawning of coral? Uh, definitely in, in shallow water, the moon uh, influences when coral spawn. We're not quite sure how Corals will signal each other to spawn in the deep sea. That's still something that is being studied. Um, but it could be tidally influenced, which is influenced, the tides are influenced by the moon. So there could be some relationship there. It's just we don't know for sure. I did say I would get back to that video game question, even though it's been 21 minutes and 29 seconds. Um, I'm probably the biggest gamer in the control van right now, and that's not saying a lot because I only really played when I was in college and then now sparsely, but uh, I have not played Subnautica. Um, I want to play Abzu by that game company because I love that game company, uh, but I've seen Subnautica and it looks fine. It looks like, you know, one of those games that you play just like, oh, let me go explore the ocean, but I do that, so... I, I play that game you every day at work. No, I just, right. <laughs> yeah. I just play Let's Explode. So Science Row? Science Row, I think the uh, that C pen is still in the hose. I kind of took a really big sample because I knew it would be the last one. Mm -hmm. So 
It is not in jar four, but I'll leave it in jar four just in case it makes its way over there. Okay. So let's just hope that it will come back to the surface. They're not very movie, are they? Uh, they shouldn't be. So I think it'll be just fine. And it's kind of flexible, so. Yeah, I think I it'll just, just be in the really hose. long. I didn't know if it was gonna make I it. I thought it was gonna way. weave all the way, but I guess not. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think it was gonna make it. No, I actually didn't either. But <laughs> I knew it would stay in the hose, so. Yeah, I guess uh, first thing is to get that out of the hose and uh, into the refrigerator as soon as possible. Uh, don't some of the uh, coral larvae stay close to the parents? That's probably what we were seeing with that sea pen garden. Yeah, it, that must be the case with that little sea pen garden where um, the larvae was were settling out really close to where they were formed. Um, in the in the case of some of the anthemastis, those uh, bu um, mushroom corals, we see little little buds near the bases of some of the larger mushroom corals, and we think that maybe they reproduce asexually, and that's why they're really close together like that. I've got an Abzu fan. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where I forget about that it exists, and then I'm probably playing like Katamari or something, so I don't think about it. I don't get to play video games very often. Um, playing Katamari? Is that what I heard? Playing Katamari Damacy? Yeah, it's the best game it. ever. It's the best game. Oh, were you not here yesterday when we were talking about it? No, I must have gone oh, for dinner. Yeah, I was talking about it. and I Oh, God, because I would have like, sang the song. Na, 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 somebody put it in the chat, na, 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 na. Um, and I was just like, you know, I'm not going to explain this game because it's very hard to explain, but it is very wonderful. But you can pause the game, and it'll be like, you are the size of a blue whale because we were mm -hmm. talking about like measurements. Like, so you know, you can measure stuff with stuff. Exactly. Like, I will be playing. I just got. This is blue water. We can talk about what we want. I just got. Um, so I've been looking for, uh, you know, the a reboot of it for later game systems because I don't really have any game systems. Um, and I guess they slipped one in on us like unnoticed right before they released the PS5. So there is a PS4 uh, Katamari reroll. Oh, yeah. oh man, now I'm going to have to get a PS4. Um, I, I think I might be getting a old dusty PS3 for Christmas along with like two of the games because that's what I asked for. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I have a PS2 that still works, nice. and I, I have Katamari Damacy, and we love Katamari. Those are definitely my, my top games. Is this our last dive? No. Well, we never know what weather conditions will be like, but the plan is no. We should be diving again around, what, noon? Yep. Hawaiian Standard Time, so in a couple hours. That is the plan, and... Uh, from how the ship feels right now, seems like we've got some decent weather, so it should still be good by the time we're ready to dive again. Uh, so it's Abzu is like an experience more than a game. Uh, all of that game company, by the way, the, the name of the game company is That Game Company. Um, they're all experiences. Journey won several awards for just being moving and amazing. Um, back to the sea. Oh, I guess one of the um, one of the watches was looking at barnacle highways. Oh. Barnacle highways? I don't know. It says, could the process that makes them form linear structures be in any way similar to what is causing the sea pins in that sediment-rich area to be so closely packed? It's a barnacle highway. I've never heard of that. Oh. I don't know. We'll have to ask it. whoever was on the other watch. I think the, the sea pens were all in a line like that just because that's where the sediment patch was because it just seemed like anywhere there was a, a little bit of sediment, there was a sea pen. It's the convention center. Ooh, this is a cool observation. It says, coral may react like dandelion seeds which float until they find a damp ground to bury in the soil. 
If the ground dries, it will spin up and flow with the wind until a damp soil that's more suitable to germinate is found. That's cool. Okay. I mean, it's always damp in the ocean, but I get the point. <laughs> it's kind of like one of those, like, if it settles here, it doesn't have to stay here sort of things. Right. Don't know. But it looked like that little patch was a really nice place to live, uh, so... You know, either stay in a place where you know it's good or you take a chance to move somewhere else. I see. They were coming up for names for what the group of barnacles was called. So there was a bunch of barnacles like in a row. Oh, okay. And so that's, yeah, that makes sense. I was like, I didn't realize, yeah, it definitely wasn't a technical term that I was familiar with. But yeah, I can see where you can get the name Barnacle Highway. It'll be coined in a few years. They're Don't just, worry. You know, during rush hour. Never moving, always honking. Uh, there was a comment in the chat earlier uh, about a shark bus. So here's the thing. Cat bus would definitely be a whale shark, right? I mean... Yeah. Yeah. So what would be the Totoro That would be so cute. That would be. I might have to draw it later. Yeah. That was the, if, if cat shark is a whale bus... Or not a whale bus, oh my gosh. A whale shark. There are cat sharks. And we there do have are. cat sharks in the deep sea. Yeah. And a false cat shark. What? There's a cat shark. I was not aware of that. And a false cat shark. <laughs> I gotta look that up. Yes. Okay, I know what a cat shark looks like. So what's a false cat shark? <laughs> you are a glutton for punishment. Well, that doesn't look anything like a cat shark. I know. It doesn't I know. even look like a fake cat shark. Yeah. They're kind of kind of big and yeah, it looks okay. more like closer to like the the goblin nosed. Uh, what is it? Goblin shark? Is that what oh it's yeah. yeah, I guess it kind of. I, I can wait. Look. It's okay. It's another deep sea shark. Oh. Ooh. Um, so the false cat shark is a little more of like a primitive um, shark. So it, it doesn't have that true dorsal fin that you, know, you normally associate with, with sharks. It has sort of a, a rounded um, hump on its back as a dorsal fin. Nope, I veto that. That is not a false cat hey, shark. Hey, I didn't come up with the names. <laughs> Yeah, if anything. I mean, if if Cat Bus is going to be a cat shark, it's definitely a real cat shark and not this poser, some imposter. But we do see cat sharks and false cat sharks on dives, um, usually at shallower depths. So, oh, I love a good cat shark. Yeah. It would be nice to see a shark on one of our dives, but a lot of our dives are a little bit too deep to see sharks. Near the some of the seamount, you might see some sharks, but down deep where we started at 3,300 meters, that, that was a little bit too deep for sharks. Isn't there, as I'm looking it up, so I know the answer is yes, a uh, bioluminescent cat shark? Um, yeah, so there are lantern sharks. And they have luminescent. Yeah. <laughs> this is just one of the things. <laughs> so Team Water, gosh, Team Blue Water is doing what Team Blue Water does best. So we'll be ascending for few hours so if you have any questions for us please put them in the chat box at nautiluslive.org we will try to give you some good answers to them. and if not point you to some resources uh, 
Uh, cat sharks are one of the largest family of sharks, correct? I don't know, is it? Maybe? She's making a face. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm kind of low on shark facts. Uh, this person says, I bet money that the, there being a shark at the surface. You would think that, wouldn't you? Um, we've yeah. seen two, I think. Both oceanic white tips, unless it, that was the same one twice. No, it's probably a different one. Yeah. And so uh, I did get asked the question yesterday if uh, oceanic white tips are generally solitary species, why do we see so many? And I don't have a really great answer for that, but what I think is the answer is that uh, the ship, while we're sitting on station, attract small fish. Uh, small fish like to associate with the boat um, as and use it as shelter. And so you'll have sharks come and they'll use it as a foraging ground. So we often see the white tips come and hang out with the boat while we are sitting on station. And that's one of the reasons why we don't do swim call. <laughs> because uh, oceanic white tips have been known um, to, to do a test bite on people. Um, they don't actively attack people, but they, being pelagic sharks, do need to find food, and uh, they also have some curiosity to them. So it's, it's best to be safe and, and not tempt any animals or um, tease any animals that might be in the ocean. So we don't throw any of our food waste overboard, um, and, and we don't try to antagonize the animals that come to visit us. Also, but we do appreciate them. So while we were having our dinner yesterday, we were definitely all appreciating the really beautiful shark that was visiting us. I think some of us saw mahi-mahi as well. Um, and the water has just been uh, pretty choppy at the surface, so even if they were there, we didn't weren't able to see them well. I also wouldn't want to go swimming in, in that condition, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Uh, swim call is something that can only happen in the best of conditions. And right now, especially since it's winter time here, uh, it's not the best of conditions for, for just taking a stroll and swimming in the ocean. We also have a lot of work to do. We don't have time to just, you know around it's also not safe to be going swimming while we have the vehicle in the water right oh they're saying that uh we should uh, design an official nautilus live game where you can control rov hercules and discover things that would be pretty cool that would be cool yeah. Um, do we think that humans have come to see things from shallow waters as cute because they're familiar? Um, is there, or is it more that deep sea creatures don't have a reason to evolve in so, any sort of aesthetically pleasing way? Uh, there are some very attractive deep sea creatures, yeah, actually. I, I mean, I think a lot of deep sea creatures are cute. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a matter of personal opinion. Little frog and fish with no animal things. has evolved for us to think they're cute. That's an us problem. I was going to say, nothing's evolved for us. It's all for the survival of their own species and passing on their own genetics. They don't care about us. Yep. That honey badger video. I don't know what the sea equivalent is. Uh, do you, are there any sharks that have fish-like scales, or do they all have sharp skin? That's one of the qualifiers of being a shark. Isn't yeah, it? so no sharks have fish scales. They all have that sort of sharky, rough skin, which is really kind of a, a cool attribute because it um, helps them swim through the water. And that's why swimmers uh, have they've created uh, swimsuits that yeah. have similar texture to shark skin because it helps water flow by the skin uh, more easily, making you faster in the water. We haven't
haven't quite fully replicated that phenomenon that shark skin skin has, but it is something that is in development. That would be cool. I kind of low-key want a pet shark. That would be awesome. There are some really small sharks, like the lantern sharks are kind of small. They're pretty cute. They're like Scalmon. little little dogfish. Yeah. Although, could you have a dogfish and a catfish? Would they Even, fight? Yeah, I don't know. They probably would just ignore each other, which is <laughs> generally what dogs and cats do. Uh, we have selectively bred dogs to be cute, though. And let me say that I usually don't find them to be so. Those tiny show dogs are usually really annoying. Yeah, I don't find them particularly cute. But I, I think the bigger dogs are cuter. Can I say, I did not know a standard poodle was so big until I was like an adult. I thought that the little poodles were the normal poodles. <laughs> the standard poodles are monsters. They're yeah, huge. they're big dogs. Oh, we got a whole product line going here. Eric and Argus ROV remote toys uh, to dive in swimming pools. That would actually be really cool. You could even make your own little miniature ROVs to, to dive in your swimming pool. Um, you really only need a few components to make something like that. Maybe some PVC pipe to use as a frame, some sort of propeller, and then a controller of some type. Have you built one? Uh, yeah. So I, I TA'd a class in uh, my undergrad where we were studying the deep sea and bioluminescence. And one of the labs was to go to the pool and build little ROVs. So that was, that was really fun activity. I think there are some kits out there nowadays where you can build your own ROV. Let's look it up. We have the time. So it'd be a, a simpler thing, more like an Argus frame situation, you think? Yeah, it wouldn't be very complicated. Not doesn't have arms on it. Um, but you could probably put, say, a GoPro. Ooh, yeah. Yep, Seamate.org sells a bunch of very fancy equipment, but there's, I'm sure. There are a couple companies making small ROVs that are all electric, that are relatively affordable. Yeah. Utah Under Water Robotics has a whole page on how to build an ROV, so perfect. Oh my goodness, with like YouTube videos, like mm -hmm. waterproofing the motors, yeah. You can totally do this as like a a project, like a s summer this would project. Be, yeah, this would be a really fun like thing to do in your science class. Oh, that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Look at that little guy. <laughs> Those dogs aren't real dogs. All dogs are real dogs. Just, you know, whether you want to hang out with them or not is the question. In my case, no, I do not. Yeah, I got a question about the next planned dive. Uh, it should be happening pretty quickly as far as I can tell, somewhere around noon today, or Hawaiian Standard Time. Oh, uh, Navigations Aaron, were you able to find out uh, which is the tallest of the seamounts we're doing on this expedition? No, I totally forgot, but Me I will too. right now. <laughs>
Ooh, have any creatures ever escaped the sample jars from the slurp? Once you rotate them, they're kind of closed, right? Yeah, so ideally they wouldn't escape, but I can't say that it hasn't happened. So um, our slurp is supposed to go only one way, but some ambitious animals might try to swim back up out of the jars um, if the jars aren't properly constructed. So after some trial and error, um, our system works really well but not every slurp system works as well. So it's it, it can be tricky. Um, it, and every system seems to have to be custom made just to fit on the vehicle that you're using. Um, so, you know, it's not always a standard uh, piece of equipment that you just buy and put on your vehicle. You have to really integrate it. Oh, this is an awesome question. Could a 3D printer replicate corals or sponges? Um, I know that there's some technology now that's being tested where they like, yeah, if it's for jellyfish, well, they have this like, I don't know how the apparatus looks, but basically they scan the jellyfish in the water so they don't have to sample or touch it. And mm -hmm. then you can like use that file to print, 3D print it. Is there something? Can you oh, I, I didn't even know you could do that with jellies, but that would be really neat. Pretty new. Like they're, Ooh, I think they're still, oh, there's Salismus. I know that one. <laughs> In the Argus view, we have a jelly called Salismus. Sol you okay? Salismus. <laughs> it's, it's got a lot of S's in it. Yeah, this comment said they've gotten out of bio boxes. Oh, yeah. Things sometimes get out of bio boxes. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was that time that Sea Cucumber tried to escape. Not on this cruise, but on a previous cruise I was on. We had, you know, one try to make a run for it. Fortunately, um, the manipulator operator was able to encourage the Sea Cucumber back down into the box. <laughs> Sort took off swimming. Um, on uh, Falcor, there was a, when we were looking for the meteorites, um, there was an anemone attached to a rock. And we're like, ooh, that could be the one. Could be the one. <gasps> the one. The rock to break the spell. And we put it in the box. And I have no idea what happened when they came. When it, by the time they came up, the anemone had vanished. Yeah. We have no ideas. Sometimes that happens. Like, some of these animals can, like, pop off their substrates and, and go somewhere else. So, like, we've seen some anemones that we've got tried to go collect them, and then they just take off and, and just, like, <laughs> fly away. And you're not expecting it. No. That's not... It's not something you would expect to happen. You think of these animals as sessile. They don't go anywhere. They don't move. Um, but turns out, uh, maybe sometimes that happens. I love seeing them swim. Like, you were clearly not designed to be doing this on a normal basis. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's definitely a response and reaction that's sort of out of desperation. And it worked for, for those individuals, so kudos to them. Kind of see it as like, you know, you're not a runner and suddenly something happens and you have to take off and you know you run a block and then you're just like, oh man, oh, I can feel that, you know, yeah. <laughs> like that strain. <laughs> that was a lot of energy. <laughs> Let's not do that again. Wake up with like a sore side in the morning. Yeah, so our next dive should be in something like five and a half hours ish. That's what, six thirty Hawaiian standard right now. And of course we have to always keep an eye out for weather and dive conditions.
this commenter said, I don't want to have to carry a dog on a walk. Truth. Yeah, I see the dogs in the little, like, doggy strollers. It's not really a walk if you're carrying <laughs> right. the dog. You're going for a walk. Yeah. A weighted walk. But you can't call it the dog's walk, then. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun watching an ROV chase an anemone. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like a, if you've ever had to chase after a toddler, their legs are so much shorter than yours, but if they get just like a little bit of a head start, they are surprisingly hard to catch. They're fast. Someone saying they put uh, money on a squid being up there too. That is a real possibility. It's, uh, it's still pretty early morning. They have seen some squid eds. Yeah, what'd you catch? Oh, I was trying to catch jelly. The hard thing is, like, I like to watch the big screen because it's right. a little bit clearer, but then it's gone when I look at the telestrator screen. Yeah. Isn't a group of jellies called a smack? Smack of jellies? A smack of jellies? I think so. Oh, there you go. There's a thing. Oh, I kind of ruined you the view of it. You missed it. <laughs> what kind of thing is that? It's probably a siphonophore. If we blow on it, it will probably burst into a bunch of different pieces. Oh, probably. There's a question about our plans for next year. Uh, our port is going to be in Honolulu for a while, a couple of years. So um, we'll be doing work in this area. So I don't know that we'd be going to the Endeavor Hydrothermal Vents, but um, yeah, we'll be doing a lot of seamount stuff likely. Yeah, I don't think that's on our schedule for next year, but there are some really exciting cruises planned. Do they have the cruise plan up on the website? I don't think so. Um, I don't know if it's officially up yet. I know that we're going on the last leg of this expedition. I think they actually took it off. So they used to have it on there. It was for spring of next year. Um, so it looks like they haven't quite updated the next, next year's uh, cruise schedule yet. Looking at this year's, I really would have loved to do the Thunder Bay uh, Marine uh, National Marine Sanctuary in the Great Lakes. That would have been awesome. Oh, that would be cool. I did Thunder Bay. Uh, how was it? It was intense. <laughs> that was fun. Um, we m mapped a lot and then got to go dive on shipwrecks every day. Super cool. Uh, my final for... Uh, 
GIS or, uh, cartography was a uh, map of the Great Lakes. Oh, cool. Very cool. It was actually shipwrecks or sunken ships of the Great Lakes, which there are a lot of. There uh, are so many. And we don't know, like, most of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, they trip over them pretty much. Yep. And we were diving on multiple wrecks a day. Um, it was super interesting because we had a, a small ROV on a Coast Guard barge. It was so different from this situation. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very cool. But he's got the dive on while working. It's cool. We will not blow your secret unless your boss is also watching while working, in which case you can't really get in trouble for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just get everybody in the office to watch. When I had jobs where I could uh, do other things, I would definitely, and I ha was using a computer, I would definitely have things on like this in the background while I did my work. I mean, I do it at home now when I freelance, but. Gotta have something interesting on. I like to enrich my brain while I work. Although cert certain tasks, uh, I can handle certain things. Like I could technically have on like a dive or a podcast or something while I was writing, but I probably wouldn't be listening to it. So, you know, I'd hear an interesting bit and have to rewind like every five minutes. <laughs> or the uh, telestrator said instead of a blue circle, you should have a little graphic of a net. <laughs> we are fishing. Are there any comic books aboard the ship? Uh, unless I brought them, I'm, I don't know. I haven't looked through the little library that we have, uh, but I make graphic novels, so maybe I'll send some to the ship. Somebody else works from home. I love working from home. It's the best. Sometimes I have a day job, though, and sometimes I'm in the middle of the ocean. But working from home is like my my um, my comfort state. That's really nice because you can go to the kitchen anytime you want. Yeah, I can work also in dangerous. whatever kind of clothes I want. Sit however I want. I sit on the floor a lot, which is weird, but that's how I'm comfortable. Is it quicker to dive to the bottom or rise to the surface? It is quicker to dive to the bottom. Go about 30 minute, meters a minute, heading down to the bottom. Rising up is what, like 15, 20? Yeah. yeah. A little bit slower just because of the effort it takes to thrust upwards with Her Hercules. So every system is different, but since we have to actively fly down and up, that's what limits our... Uh, descent and ascent speed. Uh, it says there's a great map of all the shipwreck locations. It's not all the shipwreck locations. Um, it is some of them. Uh, they, they have not uh, discovered them all yet. Um, so it's all of the discovered shipwreck locations, yes, on the Monuments Educational Resource page. It's correct. Like, they know how many ships have been lost. <laughs> we just don't... We haven't found them all yet. That's how we know we haven't found them all yet. Yeah, it, it'll be hard to find them all. Um, finding shipwrecks can sometimes be easy to spot, but sometimes not so much. You're jealous? Right? Don't be jealous. Be excited. Convert that energy into excitement, productivity. Also, um, you can apply, uh, even especially for my position as a, a science communication fellow at uh, nautiluslive.org. There's opportun opportunities for student internships um, and my position as well. And the internships range from like, mapping to, um, wait, and let me look them up before I just stop, start like talking off the top of my head here. And there's video internship. Uh Mapping internship, Oops, science over. communication. So, data RV. loggers, seafloor mappers, ROV pilots, or video engineers, and then the science communication fellowship is a separate, separate little wing of that. 
I think they're looking to start opening up the internship application process soon. Um, because of the pandemic, a lot of the people who were scheduled to go out um, were deferred to later times. So we are making sure that those individuals that were selected to go out during that time are having a chance to come out with us now if they'd like to. So I just realized I know the person that took this photo. Funny. Um, yeah, it says that applications for ATSI programs in 2022 will be limited. As, as Megan said, the team is still providing internship opportunities to students deferred due to COVID-19 pandemic. So, yep, the, it doesn't say well, when it opens, but should be... Oh, here we go. Applications generally open in late summer for internships. So there we go. People should 100% apply for the internships. Why is that, Erin? Because lots of us were interns that are still here. I was an intern. Uh, the other video engineer, Steve, was an intern. I think Antonella was an intern. She's busy, but yeah, lots of different people. What powers the ROV? We are on diesel power, so it's uh, coming from the ship. Um, do bio box contents go through any pressure-related trauma during ascent? Um, not necessarily pressure-related, but more likely temperature-related. Um, our bio boxes are filled with water, and they are slightly ins insulated, so the water should stay cold during ascent. Um, but it is very cold down where we were sampling, only a, a few degrees Celsius. So as we get to the surface where it's 27, 28 degrees Celsius, that, that change in temperature can affect our samples. Got an ROV question. Antonella is a little busy right now, so we'll hold that for a little bit. I don't know if this is true or not, but it's a cool, cool thing if it is. This chat says, uh, read, they read that uh, the Quixote Seamount was named after an American shipwreck nicknamed Deadly Dawn in 1841 as it carried a plague on board. It, plagues totally happened. Um, well, actually, look at that. We're in a global pandemic, and there were cruise ships at the beginning that had to stay um, at the... Uh, Inhabitants? Why is my brain not thinking of the right word? <laughs> the people on board, the inhabitants, <laughs> the ship dwellers, were not able to uh, uh, deboard because you know they all had COVID nineteen, so they had to kind of wait it out on the ship. So uh, we we didn't uh, let them sink in the middle of the ocean, but yeah, but that's something that did happen. Uh, what kind of schooling do you need to have to be able to apply to the internships? Depends on the internship. Um, they are very thorough with the information, um, so if you uh, have a look on the website when the application opens, um, it will spell all of it out for you. But I uh, suggest applying, if you have an interest and you think that you are, you know, if you have an interest, I think you should apply. Uh, a lot of times uh, I and many other people do not apply to things because we think that we are not qualified enough. I did not think I was qualified enough to have the position that I'm in, but I applied anyway, and here I am. So, um, yeah. Is there an upper age limit on internships? I don't know. I think you have to be a student. I know yeah. there's a minimum age, 18. Yeah, you have to be 18. Um, but yeah, you have to be a student. So I don't know that they care what age student, student or recently graduated student right so that's even even better because you don't you don't have to be in a program currently you can have graduated like a year or two before yeah, so I don't that's not your age that's you know the student status yeah you're in your mid-30s I'm in my early 30s look at that has anyone seen Welcome to Earth yet on Disney Plus? No, because I refuse to pay for streaming TV. So I uh, use my family's streaming TV, and they have not paid for Disney Plus. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
how many different nationalities take part in your expeditions? I don't have a count. A um, lot, especially in our um, our ship team. This is a foreign flagged ship, so it's not not an American ship. Um, what flag do we fly? I haven't even looked. Do you know? Ooh, does anybody know? <laughs> Feels like something I should know. <laughs> Let me look it up. Okay, after much delay, I can tell you that the shallowest seamount was seamount F, 1697 okay. meters. So that makes total sense that we saw a bit more walls yeah. there. All the all of the summits, um, with the exception of A, which we won't be going to, are within like the 1700 to just maybe 1850 range. Nice. Thank you. Yep. Has there ever been an exobiologist in one of the expeditions? I have no idea. There have been so many expeditions. Also, if they were a science communication fellow, they could have had any kind of um, background. Um, oh, actually, yes, I do know the answer to that. Silly me. Um, the uh, So Nautilus and Falcor both participated in a look for uh, meteorites. On the seafloor, and so they had, um, they had, oh gosh, a team from NASA, and one of them is a planetary. We were first, just FYI. We what? Um, one of them is a planetary. I think she's a planetary. Prote we had a planetary protector and a planetary defender. I think she was the planetary protector, and so she was interested and concerned about um, the biology that we may uh, be encountering on the rock samples, the microbiology. So yes, the answer is yes. Do we have a reaction when we see films like The Abyss? I don't usually watch movies like that. I know someone who was in that movie. Really? Yeah. Nice. He was one of the stunt guys in that scene where the, the actor gets like crushed by the the, the submarine. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Awesome. He was um, one of the pilots for the Pisces subs at the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory. Did some stunts for that movie. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, when I see movies that are related to my profession, uh, I I am the kind of person that can separate a movie from, uh, like, a story from a reality, or, like, you know, people get mad because the book isn't the same as the movie. Like, I, those are two separate things to me. So, like, I can watch a movie and enjoy it, even though it's not realistic. Although, like, you know, when I watch it again later, I'll be like, huh, that's, that's funny that they did that that way, but... Um, no, I can yeah. enjoy movies for movies. Well, yeah, movies are entertainment. You don't have to be 100% accurate, but do understand that 